Okay. Then we're good. Okay. Then we're good. Uh, call the meeting to order at 905. Roll call. Craig here. Tom here. Camilla uh, here. Um, so, uh, before we move on from roll call, I would like to note that Carol Blackbank Burroughs, who is a seated member of the Tourism Board, is not participating in five months. Mm -hmm. We have, as I understand it, reached out and asked her for a letter of resignation. We still don't have that in the city clerk's office. We can continue with four members, or this board can request that council remove her. But that's our recommendation at this point is that we discuss this publicly and you give us some guidance as to which way you'd like to go. It's unusual to remove someone, but we still don't have a resignation letter. I know, letter. I get really bad about that too. She told me I, she was I know. Yeah, yeah, and she told me several times too, so. So do you want to pursue one more time, and who should be the person to contact her? Uh, I think somebody directly from the city system. I don't think she's going to respond. That's okay. my opinion. I don't think... You're going to go up and talk to her. She's going to say the same thing, and you'll never hear from her. I'm sorry, but that's my last version of what it was. Basically, she couldn't hear us, and she's not wasting her time. So I think city council has got to go in and remove her. Yep. Okay. I hate to do that, but what do you think? Okay. Great. Council Member Grego, do you have any suggestions? No, I, think, I don't think council would have any problem. I mean, even though we don't have a history of doing that, this is an unusual circumstance, and I really would hate to be in a position with four of you on a tie. Yeah, thanks, Karen. Something that's, yeah, that's really important. I mean, we need to have that. I mean, right. that gets I'm just really, really surprised because when I talked to her, she, I said, I told her, I said, Carol, it would be much better if you put your letter in than for us to remove you, you know, just for her future because she really is great at art and so many things and really a great community member and she said okay but that was three months ago i don't think it's a black mark it's just yeah. a, okay good okay so we'll um craft a letter and um, we'll ask the chair the chair side mm -hmm. to sign the letter to the mayor and council um explaining the situation and requesting that they take action so we can advertise and see our fifth member mm -hmm. okay thank you um, approval of the minutes. You uh, had the unfortunate uh, of having me prepare the minutes. Should be right <laughs> behind your agenda. Oh, here we go. Right there. Ms. Raven was absent. If you would like more detail on the minutes. Ms. I'm Hyatt fine. and I can work with this. We did not um, I'm fine. It's like this. record the meeting on our cell phone so we can go back to Tom's um, camera. Camera, if you would like more detail in the minutes. It was an oversight that we didn't look around the table and designate right. anyone to take them. Um, does anybody have anything that, that they want to review that was in the meeting that's not in here that you want to make notations of? item we want to talk about is a reorganization of the Colorado Welcome Center. Right now the Colorado Welcome Center is operated. I'm sorry. Did I skip oh, thank you. I do have something I want to talk about. I apologize. I That's okay. Off. And and Marty, I apologize, but you need to brace yourself. <laughs> uh, on Monday I had two couples come into our shop for lunch. And um, they enjoyed themselves. We talked about the history of the town. Uh, they were uh, quite interested in things, and I asked them what I always ask. I said, how did you find us? And they said, by accident. We found that we were at the Welcome Center. And we were asking where it was a place in town to get lunch. And they were talking to a gray-haired lady who said, there's no place in town to get lunch on a Monday. And then she said, well, wait a second. They, they pried her some more, and she said, well, wait a second. There's Moose's. Go to Moose's. 
Melissa says clothes right now. Uh, but she sent them to Moses, and the lady told me, she said, she sounded like she was actually the mother of whoever owned Moses. So they go to Moses, and Moses is, is closed. And they started walking down the street, went by Bella Luna's, and uh, they were closed because they're on break, and they found us by accident. And they came in. She said they were so happy that they had found us, okay? And I pried a little more, and, and the other gentleman from the second couple had talked to somebody else at the Welcome Center and said, uh, what is there to do here in town? And that person said, I don't know, ask her. And I'm assuming to ask her is to ask you. So, in light of um, the report we had by our city attorney, Les Downs, and... Um, and his findings versus the uh, vague findings of that uh, attorney group in Denver, I really have a problem approving anything from tourism to go towards the Welcome Center. Now, the reason is this has not changed in two years. Two years ago, people were being told, why bother stopping here? The closest place you can do anything is in Pueblo. Right? Uh, the, the in my experience, I hate to say this, the people at the Welcome Center are not knowledgeable of what is downtown. And I don't think it's restaurants or businesses. I don't I think it's necessarily a thing of training. I think it's a spirit or a cancer that it's just assumed that there's nothing to do here in town and there's no place to go. So well, and before I say that I agree with you, I would love to see him walk in the streets and know what is. I know I, I have on a daily basis on my shop, where do we eat? And doggone it, I don't have a list of every place that is open and let them just to decide. I'm, I'm with you, operating a hotel. And there town. should be a list down the Welcome Center on who's open and who's not open. There is only one day, maybe two days that not everybody is open. Monday and Tuesday are probably the worst day. But, but everything is open. And I, I, I am knowledgeable on all those restaurants. I, 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 whether I like a particular restaurant don't, doesn't have reflect me. I tell everybody, even they look at me and say, no, where do you go? And I even give them Bob and Earls and Lee's. Come on. You know, I, just, I tell everybody everything. And I, I've been very dis on the Welcome Center, not knowledgeable. Yeah, but I just want to say this once because we're in a hotel and that is the question that drives me crazy all the time. And I've heard it about the Welcome Center numerous times. And it wasn't only about this week, I've heard that for things. But I just, to, to jot down, if somebody asked us at the hotel on Mondays or Tuesdays, what there is, besides the two Asian places, there's the LA Grill, that's Mission at the Bell, there's Danielson Cafe, uh -huh. there's Tease Me, Treat Me, and now New Cedars. So when I hear that people aren't thinking that it's open up, those are all the restaurants that are open on Mondays and Tuesdays. So it drives I, me crazy. I, I do. I, it drives me crazy when somebody comes in the shop and says, how come everything is closed Mondays? And I look at them and say, what? So I do think the Welcome Center needs to get a little bit more knowledgeable on restaurants. And I know people are walking the streets and they want something where they can walk to. I agree because I that's the first thing I ask uh -huh. them, walking or driving. I'm glad they found you because what a you little know. place to have. Um, so yeah, I do feel they need to be a little bit more knowledgeable on that that scenario of what's downtown. And I guess yeah. I saw, one thing that we just like to inflect is that is that, and Craig's right about that, is the energy of that you're at the Welcome Center. Wow, what a town we have. Wow, what a town we have. No matter what they want to do, wow. It would be really rare. I would probably say there's not very many places to eat after 9 o'clock unless you're out by the hotel bill. Then there would be tequilas. But besides that, in town, the Monday and Tuesday thing, people have got to stop saying, because that is, got, it has been. But the Asian restaurants, neither one of them ever close. Mm -hmm. so, so the first thing I would say back to you is the, the what um, Mr. Stevens is describing is unacceptable. And I think Ms. Hackett and I agree on that. And what we're trying to propose is that we need to reorganize the Welcome Center to provide the kind of guidance that you need over there to see this change. A list of I know, think I know we were talking is. about a few things. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Uh, we talked about who owns the building. The city owns the building. The city owns the building. And the state, how much do they put up? 
They are providing nothing right now. No. Our goal is $65,000 would be put us back into the program. Okay, so okay. we own the building. They don't give us nothing. And we have a small section in there to provide information for our city. Right. That, to me, is unacceptable. Correct. I think we were not right, disagreeing right with there. you on that. Right there. And right there is where we have to stop. And that's the biggest part of reorganizing the walking center is it should be a city thing more than it should be a state thing at this point, the way I feel, because what's, what's their input? We can certainly go forward without pursuing state support. We could do that. Mm -hmm. I believe from my experience in, in running the Welcome Center that you can have state support and still accomplish the goal mm -hmm. that I you agree. want to go. I told you that. All, all of it is tourism hub. A little, hub. Rest, a little list and, of restaurants downtown. And, and, and you don't thing, have to say what day is open, what day is closed, just give them the list. Another thing too is, I, I can't blame Ms. Hackett for what's, what's going on. You know, it's good that she's getting the input from us for her to build on something. And that's what has to be the process going forward is to build on what she hears from us and what, you know, was, it's not good. So you, I, you know that. You know well, it's it, not good. I think, I think it is a symptom of showing you that we really need to work together. Uh, another thing, too, is um, we have a community center uh, board on Main Street right here. Mm -hmm. Why can't we have one right there with a list of all the restaurants as you walk in or walk out of that welcome center? Um, or things to do in the city. If 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 that's the step that steps that we have to make, we, those are the steps that we have to make. So we know we have two uh, things that we think need to be addressed immediately at the Welcome Center. One is staffing. We need to reorganize the way we're staffed. Um, a lot is resting on Miss Hackett's shoulders. In the meeting that I had with her. This last week when we had the door closed, we were interrupted twice just to ask where certain brochures were. So I have observed firsthand that when she is not there, the basic questions the are not, the knowledge is not there. So it, it goes beyond training. We've got to recruit volunteers that are trained, that understand and are invested in the community. And I think that's what Mr. Stevens is talking about. Warm bodies are... Warm bodies are, are warm not, bodies. If you were at Trinidadio are. and you went in the gate at Trinidadio and you saw the hundreds of people that were volunteering for that event, or you're at Articade and you see the hundreds of people that are volunteering for that event, you're talking to people that are invested in the community and they're volunteering for the types of events that move the community forward. And we have an excellent history of volunteers at the Welcome Center. We need to reach into the community. We know we need to recruit the types of volunteers that are invested in the community and those that are new, and we have, and Ms. Hackett has been successful in doubling the number of volunteers, bringing in some folks that are new from the community. But if she's cleaning the restrooms and she's answering every tourist question that comes in, there's really no one there to help train the volunteers. So we're, we're discussing that. We're proposing a new structure that we think will address the concerns that you've brought up. I think Marty needs to be free to address the floor, the how the brochures are laid out. We heard you loud and clear two weeks ago. Did you want to add anything, Ms. Hackett, to kind of what I'm speaking toward their concerns? Um, so what I've done, but, well, let me re re make a quick response um, to your concern about knowledge being available to the volunteers. Um, on the front desk, is our Trinidad booklet. Clearly, pages are marked that say restaurants, hotels, other things to do. Um, it has desk copy clearly written on the front, and I, when I arrive in the morning and, I, and when I'm not there, they've been instructed to place that booklet on the counter. So every volunteer has access to that booklet. In that booklet lists all the restaurants that are in town. Unfortunately, we didn't put hours that were open on that booklet. So what I did was I researched the hours of operation for each of the restaurants that are listed, and they're clearly marked on there. So the information is available to them. What I'm doing right now is training them to utilize the materials that they have so that they can be better at what they do. 
So there is the information available to them. It's you, just more. You only have one booklet. Well, it's one booklet for volunteers, but they're, what I'm trying to get them to do is um, not memorize, but repeated use of, of the knowledge. So restaurants are on page 56. And hotels and motels are the last page of the booklet. Things to do are on page whatever, I don't remember that one. But every page is clearly marked so that they have, if, if they have any question, you know, or, or any concern or anything about what to do, where to eat, where to stay, it's clearly marked. And daily, I give them that, okay, so if I'm there and I hear somebody come in, the office is, I'm in the office right next to it, right downstairs now. So. I listen every time there's a bell ding, that door dings, and my ears perk. It's like, okay, what are they saying? What are they doing? How are they responding? And if there's anything that raises a flag, I'm immediately out that door, and I'm helping them along. Um, I don't like to interrupt. I kind of let them go, but I, uh, um, I lend assistance. So uh, where is there somewhere to eat? Well, so I'll jump in right away and say, well, what, what, you know, what are you looking for? What type of food are you looking for? You know, this is our local favorite. This serves soup and salad on that end of town. Which direction are you headed? Are you headed north or south? Do you mind going south to maybe the Peaks restaurant and getting a soup and salad bar? Do you mind going, you know, are you going to go downtown? Take a walk downtown. I'll show them the pedestals and the plaques where they can do a tour at the same time, you know, they're going to get ice cream or food. And kind of being, um, a model for them to follow so I do that on a daily basis these volunteers have been there some of them for 30 years and they are set in their ways and they are mostly elderly so it's a matter of not training them so much they know what they're supposed to do it's a matter of um, re-educating them on how to do it so that's the process that I'm following um, what else did you want me to respond to? Well, Can actually, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not done yet. Going with Tom's okay. suggestion is, since we're still trying to get with the state, I do believe that the businesses should be allowed to advertise on that wall, and the volunteers, all they got to do is point. Okay, we can advertise ourselves. Mm -hmm. They don't. We don't need to re-educate them. We need to teach them how to point. I think that's all that we can do with them at this time, because re-education is just too long of a process, especially when they're just so set in their ways. Let us advertise. Establishing new habits. Yeah, new let habits. us advertise. Okay, I, let us get on the wall and then, you know, they can look at the menu, they can look at the hours, they can look, you know, we can advertise ourselves. And then when the state comes in and says, okay, you got to take your stuff down, you know, by that time, hopefully we will have volunteers that are I, I don't think the state will come in and say we have to take it down. I'm getting clarification on Monday, okay. the 24th, on that. Um, I was responsible for the Welcome Center for four years. We were successful in the state program. We always had the types of brochures you're talking about advertised. We don't believe that that's going to be impossible. As Marty stated at our previous meeting, at our work session a few weeks ago at the Welcome Center, we had that meeting on Monday, so we're getting clarity on that. I think um, our next meeting will be at the Welcome Center, and we should be able to visually walk around and give you the clarification at that time to both of your points. We've heard you loud and clear. We're planning on moving in that direction. I, I know there's just so much, you know. I, there's so many, There's so much that you need to do to revamp the place that's not been successful, but I'm wondering if there's, if there's anything okay, even a big chalkboard that has all the downtown restaurants on it, it's small, it just, you know, let's face it, if you're elderly and stuff, the booklet is still a booklet, it's a guide, and you're going to feel kind of unusual to bend over, look at a booklet, and the print. So to get them downtown, even maybe a, a chalkboard, you know, and you can put it on a lean to, I've got a few more if you, if you need them, like the artist pellets. And you could have, like, you know, downtown restaurants, and have all the restaurants downtown, and then, you know, south side, you could put tequilas or whatever, or, but north side, Pizza Hut. But, um, but, you know, to be able to, um, so they could walk in, and even if they're not thinking of eating, to see a list of, you know, if you use, even, then there's the fast food line at the very bottom, there's 30 restaurants. Even, even if it was color-coded, right. say, yeah. here's the wall, this wall's mm -hmm. red. That's all the restaurants we have in town, that's their menus. If, you just point to that wall well, and you can go pick anything you want. 
on that note, when we when we have people walking downtown, they literally want to eat downtown. Mm -hmm. yeah, you do. know, I could sit Absolutely. there and say, "What are you interested in?" We got a couple Chinese food. We got a couple Mexican mm -hmm. food. Or are you walking and just want to walk someplace? I mean, I've done that very rarely, but I look at them and say, "You're walking." So you know, most of the people want to walk, and then I I even go stand out my door and point to all of them. Because yep. you can, if we're Trinidad, right. you can point to all of them. Yep. Tell them exactly where they're next to, where. So I think that's the biggest people, the people, maybe if they're in the car in the Welcome Center, that's a whole different vibe because you could mention the two Chinese places right behind us. And downtown is a different story for us. Right. And, you know, this, right. I, and, and you guys are giving yeah. great yeah. discussion. I'd I like to okay. turn it to okay. the item because we identified some of the same concerns you have. And, and I, I spent a little time over there with Marty this week, and my feedback is that when you have two part-time employees, those part-time employees come in for somewhere between 18 and 24 hours a week. It's very difficult to invest them and to be in charge of a specific program. They, um, like all part-time employees, they don't necessarily have the investment that a full-time employee would have. When Miss Hackett's not there, which is only two days of the seven days a week, we're relying on those folks, those two part-time people, to be in charge of the brochures, the visitors that come in, the volunteers, how they're, how everyone's treated, um, how how the the type of quality of experience you want them to have. We feel like we need to move away from two part-time people and go to an assistant manager. The most successful times of the Welcome Center have been when you have the investment of an assistant manager who's there every day, who works with Marty, who you mentioned cut the cancer out. I think getting a full-time assistant manager along with Marty backs up all the things Marty is trying to do. I think it gives her a partner in running the Welcome Center, and I think it also gives the volunteers that that person that they can uh, count on. When you talk to the volunteers, they love Marty. When Marty's not there, things don't seem to run as smoothly. I just want to make a point on the part-time. UPS is run by part-time. Okay. It's, it's the responsibility of those part-timers. That's their job. Right. You know, but I think two is better than one because you'll always have two people with different, you know, my feeling is I've seen part-times do more sometimes than full-time people. The second reason we wanted to look at a full-time person as an assistant manager is that when we hired Marty, we hired her as the Welcome Center Manager and Event Planner, and the second item on the agenda is to change her title to Tourism and Welcome mm -hmm. Center Manager so that she will be facilitating the tourism board. And she will be reporting, she'll be handling your agendas, she'll be managing the contracts that you do. This is the, um, this is what we heard from you that you wanted to move toward a convention and visitors bureau type of arrangement with a director that would run the tourism bureau at some point in time. So moving Marty into fulfilling the event planner responsibilities, managing the tourism and overseeing the Welcome Center means that we need someone to step up to be that day-to-day, -to, -day, to handle the distribution on behalf of the uh, tourism board, and to be that day-to-day -day presence when Marty is interacting with the event planners or when Marty is handling the tourism board contract. So we're proposing a reorganization to manager and assistant manager for several of those reasons. One, that, that you would have a full-time manager and director of the tourism board, that we would have that person also be the event planner in the community, and that person would be based out of and oversee the Welcome Center operations and be responsible for the type of feedback you're giving right now. Then we would have an assistant manager to be responsible for that day-to-day, -day, the distribution for the tourism board, the brochure program through the state, um, the placement of those brochures, the scheduling and training of volunteers. So I totally understand that part-time people, if they have a clearly defined role, can be very, very effective 
but if Marty is going to step into this role of facilitation of the tourism board and the events and managing the overall being responsible for the facility, we felt like we needed an assistant manager that was there on the day-to-day -day basis. What are your thoughts on that overall reorganization? You make an excellent point on the mm -hmm. part-time. That's why I'm go going yeah. back and saying, where is the logic? Do you have a different idea? Well, you know, I, I think three heads are better than two. Okay. You know, if you could divide those two part-timers up with portions of that, I, I just think that you have two part-time people now and a full-time person now. You have three people that are very knowledgeable of what's going on on that what's going on down there. And I think that's where you have to go with is, is. The difficulty is if you're responsible for the day to day and you only work three days a week, can you be successful? If you're only there three days a week in so a that's seven day a week operation, a week that would be the part time. And if you're. And a so a full time is 40 hours. Five days a week. Five days a week. So is that time split between them on weekends? Yes. Right now, Ms. Hackett has worked, her weekend is today and tomorrow. So since she came on 90 days ago, her weekend is Wednesday, Thursday. So one of them's always on. Always Wednesday. on. Okay. So for so her on. to assume facilitation of the tourism contracts and be the event planner, with the problem we've run into when people want to come forward to the city for events is Ms. Hackett really only is at work three business days of the week, and it becomes difficult for her to do that. So we would like to move her. Is it, isn't it better to have her off on the weekends? We're going to have her Sunday through Thursday, and then we need that responsible person. And I just feel like the position we're in now, if that assistant or those part-times are going to be responsible on a Friday and a Saturday, the largest tourism days of the week, we need to invest in someone as an assistant manager that's there, that's consistent, and if Marty is at Trinidad or she's at Articade or she's doing different things, her schedule eventually will probably work some portion of all seven days in the week because of the way we've set her job up and she needs that flexibility. Right now with the way we've got, got it with the two part-times is she's tied to every single, she's responsible for every single program at the Welcome Center. Because it's a seven day a week operation and those part times that are just there three days, can they do a job? Sure, but it's back to that warm body in charge versus someone capable of running the facility. And that's my, my, that's my thought about the part time right now is it's just warm bodies. I think that we are noticing that that's true. We've recognized that we need to make a change. And I can see with the workload. Yeah, with the workload, I, I just... I, that's, that's what I could see is... How many, hours, how many hours a week is the welcome center open? It's open in the summer, 70, and in the winter, 63 hours a week. When is it open during the winter time? 8 to eight 5. To, eight to, oh, 8 to 5 in the winter. 8 to 6. So Saturday and Sunday? Uh, so it's open seven, 7 days a week. It's open yeah, 361 day a days a year. It's only yeah, closed on Easter, Christmas, New Year's, and Thanksgiving. It's open the other... 361 days. I could, I could see what the work that, that the two full times. The two full times? Mm -hmm. So you would be amenable to that? Does any, Mr. Stevens, yes. Okay, okay. So we've got the job descriptions in front of us. If we could look at the assistant manager, I want you to note that their main <coughs> responsibilities will include, and I should add, I printed it before adding, um, distribution for the Welcome Center for the Tourism Board, both through the mail and locally will be their responsibility. Oh, right so on. they're going to be managing the day-to-day. -day. Their normal work day will be Tuesday through Saturday. They're going to plan and execute volunteer activities. They're going to maintain a volunteer roster and activity report. They're managing volunteer schedules, orientations and recruitings, the brochure program, and all the and then the distribution on behalf of tourism board both through the mail and locally regionally and then they'll participate as assigned by the welcome center manager in duties and meetings we scored this position the salary is fourteen dollars and fifty cents an hour that comes to right at thirty thousand dollars a year 
when I did this job, I made $27,000 uh, seven years ago. The two part-time that we employed. 32000 total. 32000 combined total. Mm -hmm. just, it just occurred to me, is there any chance we could get a VISTA? Um, we could get a VISTA, but the um, VISTA is to do special projects. And build capacity. That was what Andrew was. Graduate, it's oh, what okay. Andrew was. We okay. have a Vista coming, Same. and they're going to manage the um, five boards and commissions. Um, the dis the difficulty with the Vista is you have them for twelve months, so you spend time training them, and then they're gone. Okay. But there's a lot of special projects, just like you there know, are that, that can be done there. I mean, you know, Andrew was also exceptional. So my really? fingers are crossed. Really yeah. yeah. Dear God, yeah. Yeah. Um, you didn't realize until. Yeah. So this is thirty a thirty thousand dollar a year job. The two part time salaries are thirty two thousand total. The difference will be this will be more expensive because we're offering benefits with this, and the two part times do not have benefits. So as you know, a benefit package depends on whether they're single, whether they're married, or whether they have family, a full family of four. So we always budget as if we're hiring the most expensive employee. So a $30,000 job is equal to $56,130 at the most expensive, and we just hire the most qualified person, and then we will have the full budget depending on what their insurance requirements would be. Okay, we want to move on to the manager, the new a description for the Tourism and Welcome Center manager. Tourism and Welcome Center manager has the same job descriptions that you saw before when we hired, except that under the Welcome Center manager, it moves to oversee rather than manage. So uh, Ms. Hackett will oversee the day-to-day -day management, so she will oversee the assistant manager as they carry out their duties. I'm sorry, sir, just to, I don't sure. to interrupt you, but I just want okay. to clarify this. So there's going to be somebody that's really managing the employees and, and then and then Marty oversees that. Marty is overseeing the entire operation and she's responsible to the tourism board, the city, and the state for the operation. But that assistant manager will be doing the scheduling, they'll be doing the training, and they'll be doing the recruiting, and they'll be doing that day to day on a um, Tuesday through um, did I just have a Tuesday through Saturday schedule. Ms. Hackett will work Sunday through Thursdays, particularly through the winter. Um, while we have time to build the program, she's going to oversee the management of all volunteer training activities, which means she'll be available and participating in those. However, our expectation is the assistant manager will handle the training in the day-to-day. -day. She will prepare the monthly visitation and operation reports for the Colorado Tourism Office and will add to that the, the tourism board. She'll submit the volunteer and activity report regularly to the city. She'll oversee the management of the volunteers and schedule orientations and recruiting activities. So once again, oversee the management, which means that assistant manager is handling the day-to-day -day and she's overseeing it. If you move to the event planner, you can see that what we've done with Ms. Hackett's job description is she's going to be in charge of coordinating and managing all the city's aspects of events. So when an event comes forward and wants to close down the streets, they need an operating plan that involves the police or fire. Ms. Hackett's going to be the point of contact and she's going to coordinate the department head response to that. She's going to serve as the public contact for all special events. That even means that if your family wants to rent Chimino Park for a family reunion and use the pavilion and reserve that, you're going to do that through Ms. Hackett and through the Welcome Center. So we're going to be tied into every event that's happening in the city space, in the public space within the city. Marty will be able to provide the report of what those activities are regularly, and this will be a tie that you have not been receiving to what requests the city gets. She'll be responsible for the administrative support of the entertainment district, and she'll coordinate and oversee all entertainment district events, and I think that's been something that the entertainment district has identified they've needed, is some staffing, so she'll be responsible for that. She'll seek out events that have positive community, financial, and marketing impact for the town. So we will start to look at all the events that Ms. Hackett coordinates and what its impact is on sales tax, where it's positive and where it could be better. Work with various community entities to create new events that come forward and what the city's support might be of that. Solicit and coordinate vendors, musicians, nonprofits 
and managers to produce special events, set and communicate timelines and priorities on each project, coordinate the logistics and the infrastructure for safe, uh, successful events like the 4th of July. She'll be coordinating that with Main Street. She'll be the city liaison for that, so coordinating the fire department, the police department, the parking, all those types of things, along with department heads. She will um, deliver and supervise those events, promote and communicate City of Trinidad events. So Ms. Hackett will be responsible for the online calendars, both on the city's website and the tourism website. She'll be working with the tourism contractor to make sure that those events get communicated. She's gonna work closely with my, myself and the department to make sure that we're staying on budget as we're implementing the tourism budget as well as the, any budget we set aside in economic development for events. She's going to attend and, and engage the merchant community in how those events are promoted and how they participate in them, as well as how they'll participate in the Welcome Center and how the Welcome Center will, will, um, will learn about the downtown merchants. She'll provide excellent, excellent customer service. She's gonna model teamwork and collaboration and effectively communicate both in oral in, and in writing. And then this section we've added is a new section. It's tourism manager. She's gonna be responsible for the administrative support of your board, oversee the trolley program, implement any of your grant programs, facilitate the tourism board meetings, oversee the distribution of all tourism marketing materials, which will actually be the, the doing of that, the implementation of that will be with the assistant manager, but Ms. Hackett will oversee that that's done and she'll manage any of the Tourism Board's marketing contracts going forward. So she will communicate with you as you ask her to, and she will um, work closely with me as we're implementing this to make sure we're hitting all the marks. This is a very aggressive job description. And you think you can do this all in 40 hours a week? We've been asking her that. <laughs> I think if we don't provide her with the support at the Welcome Center, it's not going to happen. Because right now she is mopping, cleaning, answering questions about where the Breckenridge brochures are. Um, if we don't provide her with support, this is not possible. And this is what I think we need to get you to your goals of the Convention and Visitors Bureau. And the, she's going to need the assistance, and the assistant should not be mopping cleaning no, and washing toilets. No. Okay, so that should be something the volunteers should be willing to do to help with because there's too much here for to be done. Okay. And so you can't just you know, it needs two people full time handling that. Uh, so the, You're correct. Um, the assistant won't and we're we're seeking okay. to extend the contract the city has in getting someone to do that for us at the Welcome Center. Okay. So Marty's current uh, salary is 43,000. This will take her to 46 to 17. It takes her to the middle of the range of her salary. And with benefits, that puts Ms. Hackett's uh, total compensation at 67,147 as a benefited employee of the city. So now that we've gone through this, I'd like you to go ahead and look at the budget that I provided, the amended budget for discussion. Because I want to talk about the impact now that you understand what we're trying to do on the jobs. Tara, I just and, and the city description. I don't know. This might not be part of this. Okay. But is there anywhere where there could be like um, develop goals, and then there be some sort of a, a, a check so that we can we can measure how the goal how how the yes. job is doing by goals or some sort of um, some sort of job description. Yeah. So but take then, take the responsibilities of the job and set them into measurable goals. Yeah, measurable sure. goals. And then um, and what would you like to do for Miss Hackett? Would you like to do six months reviews? If we set if, if I develop measurable goals, she reports and is supervised by me with your input for her for her performance. To give you an example, I was recently reviewed part of my review this year was done by the Planning, Zoning and Variance Commission. So the Human Resources Department uh, distributed um, materials, had them review my performance and came back and then while my supervisor, I still report to the city manager as my supervisor, that was taken into account. I would propose if you would like to be part of the review process for Ms. Hackett, we do something similar. 
What would your, would it be an annual report? Well, would you good. want to do the first six months and then annually thereafter? That there sounds good, go. except for, okay. I would really like to do the 90 day review. That's what I okay. usually do. And then after that period of time, six months or annual, but the first 90 days, just so that we can all get on the same page if we decide. So 90 days would put us about January? Yeah. Okay, so a January review and then January thereafter, unless an issue arises? Right. Yeah. Okay. And then just be, the other thing that I would really like to see, but it's really hard, I don't know when the appropriate time for this is, is to develop a test for the volunteers. So um, what are all the places, if somebody wants a coffee shop, they can go to Danielson, Cedas, uh, Tease Me, Treat Me, LA Grill, besides Starbucks, because that's what I've heard, is they send them to Starbucks. So there's a, a other lot of places that actually serve coffee. You know, just some sort of testing so that they feel you know, like, you can't work yet because you didn't pay us your test. You right. need to know about, you know. So I think the test is a good idea. I think also once um, Ms. Hackett has a full-time assistant sitting down and maybe doing a work session over an in-depth training program that volunteers would go through. Fort Collins has a pretty detailed training program that Ms. Hackett can visit with. Ms. Blanche, she's the Welcome Center Manager in Fort Collins. There is a certain number of hours required for testing and training prior to getting being put at the desk. There's a certain time that you work with a veteran volunteer before you're able to work your own shift, those types of things. Would that be something you'd be interested in looking at? Sure, for sure. We just want to, we, we, you know, we want to give them the tools. They don't have the tools now. We need okay. to give them the tools so that they can be better volunteers. Because I appreciate them jumping in on our town and working, but you know, we, it, it hurts our town if they don't have that information. I think the difficulties that the Welcome Center has gone through in the past three years have taken the tools that did exist there once, and Ms. Hackett is beginning from mm -hmm. zero without a lot of that available to her to make that happen. Ms. Hackett, did you want to make any comments back yeah. about the job description discussion or what you're thinking about the responsibilities, clarification on any of them? And just in addition to um, the original job description when I was hired as the Welcome Center Manager, um, the administrative support, the other um, additional duties, um, I would just ask that you would clearly consider <coughs> the full-time assistant. So if we're all on board with that, I, 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 can, I don't believe I could be successful if I don't have the support of an additional assistant. and. You know, and your support as well. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, this is a new thing for all of us to um, to move forward with, and I, I think we can be successful. If we all help each other out. So, well, I'm open to any kind of help, any kind of suggestions. Um, I would Did we go to a lot of those conferences where a lot of the our, you tell me, guys, where a lot of the tourism board was involved with the welcome centers? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Mostly not. Well, it yeah. all ties in. No, well, we well went they all tie in, but yeah. literally. Yeah, when we went to, we sat with people last week yeah. that were yeah. at the big table, that were all um, yeah. tourism yeah. people yeah. with welcome center. It's, it's all, huge. it should be one, it should be connected tightly. No, it's all one goal. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Hackett has worked in one way or another the past decade or more inside tourism and hospitality industry in Trinidad. And when we sat down to talk about this last week, her first comment is, this really intuitively makes a lot of sense. It brings together a lot of what has been going on positively in the community into one place. So is it aggressive? Yes. Have we quizzed her long and hard about whether or not she feels like this can be done and she is willing to move forward? But we, I think to her point, we, she will require support from all everyone to get this done. But the outcome is we will have a very well-run Welcome Center that is integrated into our tourism activities and you will have access to and information on all the events that are going on in town and that becomes really necessary as we talk about marketing. So I do have some issues. Okay, let's talk oh. about the updated amended budget. Or did, were you still in the job description? No, I, no, I'm good with that. Okay. You know, I still have the problem of tourism spending money that isn't directly to bring people to Trinidad. Okay. But I see on here, building maintenance, the building that is owned by the city. You, that was added by uh, Mr. Sun yesterday. I'm willing to go back to him and say that that was not approved as part of the budget. But what has been happening is when 
when that was run as a state organization and they were providing the money, building maintenance was part of what the state provided money for. When the state money went away, building maintenance was absorbed into the general fund in a department called building maintenance where all the janitorial supplies and all the building maintenance was done through the city. I was advised yesterday to bring the building maintenance of that particular building over into the tourism fund, which added, you know, with the salaries we're talking about, at the most expensive, a potential $21,000 change, and with the building maintenance, it makes it 31000 So uh, I, just, I need your feedback. My feedback this. is that's wrong. Well, uh, I, I, the trolley too. I see operation. I see operation. I see building maintenance. You know, I see things that. And and the trolley was in there when we had the discussion with Mr. Sun. The two lines that have changed since then are the salaries and the building maintenance. Everything is the same as when we spoke with Mr. Sun about the budget. Now I'm happy to take any feedback back. I just wanted to make that clarification. Oh, I just want to, I, I really I really need to tell Craig though, just because we were getting copies of our billings through Jonathan, we have always paid for Charlie. Always. Always. All the way back it, to the yeah, call, before crazy? Jonathan. We've always paid it. And so that's one of the reasons why we want to see the bills is you would have realized that. I would have said something back yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But the way I see it, and it's really important to me because I the way I see it right now, with everything that's kind of falling apart and trying to rebuild, we're building a team. We're not knocking people down. We need to build people up. We need to educate people. We need to come together. We already have volunteers. We need to educate those volunteers. Is if we can get sixty-five thousand dollars back from the state of Colorado, and the city's throwing in fifty thousand, the very most that's going to cost the tourism board twenty-eight thousand dollars to have somebody. And that's the way you got to look at it. If we get the sixty-five, we're getting fifty from the city. We get sixty-five back from the state. But I didn't think it was fifty. I, yeah, the, no, it's just right here. The they marijuana, 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 I, I, I see it this way. If, if, how long do we have the marijuana money? You have it yeah. this year and next year, so through 2020. So, so what happens after that? I think you need to be prepared to yeah. negotiate that. So, we, so, so we need it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So yeah. it should never, my Absolutely. feeling is it should never it should be taken be out. And, no. and the no. city no. council no. cannot obligate beyond one year. So no. that is going to be an annual discussion with them. I don't think... Anyone disagrees with you, but but it would be impossible for them to make that commitment. It's it's so an it's annual 50 or 50 It's lot. fifty thousand. It's noted it in the second line there. So if I was fifty five, I could go back and look. I think so. So, 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 so since we're taking on more, we could ask for more money from the marijuana money. No. Is, or is there we a could ceiling? Say we need seven years. So right. Is there is there a ceiling on it as to I, I don't think there's a ceiling on any request. So, so I, you know, you've asked us to take on more. Right. So, naturally, we can ask uh, them always well, to take right. on more. What irritates me is you just sneak in another 10 grand. Mm -hmm. Can I say I, something, please? Yes, um, please. Thank you. Okay. So, you think, I've been with Cy through the history of the tourism board. We were there. The first tourism board that was formed in Trinidad paid for a trolley out of our tourism funds. I, it's disheartening to hear the conversation that the city of Trinidad is here and the tourism board is here. We're not two separate entities. We're one entity. So what you've got to understand when you're doing this, we have budget constraints, which means that you might have budget constraints, but you've got to understand that the city of Trinidad paid three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a brand new trolley. You didn't incur that through your budget, the city of Trinidad. So kind of be mindful of that when you're talking about increased expenses. It's all of us. Now the city didn't cover the full three hundred and twenty five thousand because we had a big surplus that was taken out when we first had it built. I that I don't know. I do yeah, know that there was a lot of money. Yeah. 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 So we kinda of emptied our coffers for a trolley. You know, I'm just saying the ten thousand dollars could be spent to bring people to town. It's still the purpose but in, a, in, a sense, in, a, in a sense in a sense in a sense it is. It. Is if we refocus this and that ten thousand dollars is working for us to bring people into the community through the welcome center. It is working for us. You so that's that's the way I'm going to look at it. 
You've got to yes, choose yes, that, yeah. that's, and the way, that's the and way I'm going to look at that. The $65,000, if we're successful, comes in four buckets. They define four buckets. One is building maintenance, so that would be covered by the state. One is salary, one is volunteer enhancement, and the other is travel and training. So they provide their 65000 broken into four buckets, and that was why we always had building maintenance through the Welcome Center, because the state provided that. Just, just to clarify, just to clarify, though, I just want to say, is you know, there's that stuff about $340,000. I just want to, we, so the tourism board paid about one hundred forty, I think, down on it, unless there was some other arrangement done with Jonathan that I wasn't aware of. And then the payoff on it should have been around two fifty. That I don't yeah. know. Okay. I, I apologize. I don't know the no, answer. No, no, no. I just want. I just to saw the line. Yeah. Item. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's, we don't know, Karen, because we haven't found them yet. One of the biggest things that I, I love so to see are bills. They will be next what, month. Yeah. What I would like to see is the money that was spent this year, okay. the, the balance of where we're at this year, mm -hmm. and what we have left for the year, where we stand for the year. You know, I think since I've gone on on March, there's so many things that we haven't completed. And I think that's my, okay. that's that's kind of my feeling that I would like to see some things done. Well, mm -hmm. we keep on adding more. I think one of the every, every meeting, there's, there's something added more and we forget what we left two months ago. So my response to that would be yes it's, it's exhausting there's been re-conversations and re-conversations about some of the same things if you go back to when you were facilitated by jonathan which was november of last year to now which is september of this year so we're talking 10 months we've hustled you around from staff member to staff member you've been moved around at one point raven was facilitating at one point andrew was facilitating at one point, I've been facilitating. We all have different styles. We all have different priorities, and we've been dividing the responsibilities. I recognize that you haven't had consistent leadership from a staff level. I'm hoping that if we can implement this change, just, com you just completion. Have that's, completion. That's, what I, that's what I want. Like the trolley. Where do we stand today with the trolley? Has it been sent? So, Andrew, we're, we're, we've reached out, and I have a call with them on Thursday, which is tomorrow to find out exactly where we are. So once again, a staff member has left that was responsible for a number of things related to the tourism board, and now we're making that transition. So you're correct. I think no matter how good staff members are, if I'm managing a project, Completely. even if I give somebody all the notes, I've still got most of that up here in my head. And Andrew was managing your major responsibilities with Studio 6. Right. So we're trying to get, as you know from attending the con conference calls, we're trying to get our hands around where that stuff is right now. The launch of the website and the tourism trolley. Okay, I do need to address <laughs> that subject. Right, that's on my list. Okay, okay. if we can finish this yes, subject, then I, then I, I do agree. That. Okay. Nail that one. So um, I guess what we're looking for is to come up with an answer for Tara so that she can take it forward and hear us. So back to the 219, the 2019 tourism budget discussion amended. I believe Mr. Stevens was kind of going, we were going through this and you were expressing where your thoughts were. Um, it changed on the top line from 275 to 290. I understand we're going to realize 290 this year and we will have a balance at the end of the year. 50,000 from marijuana and to Councilmember Griego's suggestion, I'm going to look and see if that's 55 or 50,000, but we'll verify that. For a total of 340,000 based on the 50,000 number. Salaries have gone from 102 to 123, and once again, that change, that $21,000 change is really vested in that benefited employee. The two part-time employees now are at $32,000. We're proposing a base salary of $30,000 for the assistant manager. So we make comparable changes there, but we are picking up the benefits. That also includes the uh, change of Ms. Um, Hackett's salary from 43 to the 46 um, and change salary. As Mr. Stevens pointed out, we've got building maintenance in there now. Volunteers and training, travel have not changed. The trolley has not changed and the billboards have not changed. So what changed at the bottom line is the remaining unbudgeted funds prior were 175,000 and now they're 160,450. 
So it is a $15,000 change on the bottom line as to what's available for all other activities. Thank you, Chair, for making that so easy okay. to understand. But um, how, how soon, what is this time period for us to think that we could get state, the state funding back in 65? July 1 of next year is the goal. Okay. So, um, so if we just do it this year and hopefully we'll get half of half the rest of this year and half of next year. They're what on a fiscal year. What determined them not to give? Give less it was a, a previous city manager. It was a disagreement with the current Welcome Center manager and the state. And as a result of that disagreement, the volunteers walked out. And when the volunteers walked out, the, the Com Colorado Welcome Center was no longer compliant. And the state pulled the funding and put a note on the highway where it says Colorado Welcome Center that said closed. Okay. And it stayed never, up for about eight or nine months. No. And I don't know the details. That. Yeah. So, so that was prior to Councilmember Griego's, Ms. Hackett's, yes. and my time. Yeah. So there is a period of renegotiating with them to bring everything that back. That is exactly. Yeah. We opened that about four months ago. Part of it was getting uh, Ms. Hackett hired. We have. She's having conversations with her direct report at the state. Ms. Uh, Chairman Michaels and I are having conversations with Kathy Ritter, the head of Colorado Tourism. They know that's our desire. I think this arrangement of a manager and an assistant manager moves us toward that because it brings us into the same management structure as the other Colorado Welcome Center. Is centers. that same person in that same position that pulled that at that time? No, that person at the state was fired. And the new person is also in Marty's same position in Burlington. And we've known, I've known her my seven years that I was here. She was the assistant manager in Burlington. Now she's the manager. She's just been made the coordinator of all the Welcome Center managers. So the way we're building this is yes. going to give us a better chance, a better outlook it as is. to where we, we're going to look at a year for June, yes. July. We're having several conversations at the state level. One is the refunding. The other is Marty coming in and reorganizing the Welcome Center, bringing in an assistant. And the third is we're starting discussions about moving the location of the Welcome Center, which the state's very amenable to, to someplace on at the end of Commercial Street, likely in La Puerta, where we can receive highway traffic. Both directions. That will come back to you. We're starting the negotiations for that now at the state to see if they would be amenable to for, to funding it if we move. Here's here's the thing that, that I feel good about now. I never knew any of that. Okay. But if we were informed about all of that, Correct. I think it would be a well-informed board, not just some of us knowing some things, all, but all of us knowing. So just because Ms. Hackett is, is going to be responsible for you, my plans are still to be engaged with the board at a director level. You will have access to everything that's going on in development that affects the tourism board. You will have access to everything that's going on with special events through the city because Ms. Hackett's going to be heading that up and you'll have access to the full management at the Welcome Center. This is something that you haven't had before. We recognize that. Wait, I still, one thing, and then I'll shut up about this. Ordinance number 1672, the revenues from said tax to be used exclusively for the advertising and marketing of local tourism. I don't see where building maintenance and operations fit into that category. I don't want to be part of that problem. And so that's why I'm raising the flags. I, you know, you can't convince me that that is advertising and marketing of local tourism. You can't, you can't convince me of that. So I'm a dissenter. I'm, I apologize. No, I don't think so you need to apologize. apologize. For that. I, if we have control of the Welcome Center, that is our responsibility. I'm, I'm the opposite. I, I that is our. our the Welcome Center is our responsibility. Then bring it on. We're, that's the whole ball of wax we got. Well, the way I'm looking at it. I, that's how I look at it, but that's, you know. You're all seated because you have different perspectives. And that's, and we get along. And you're seated because and it's important to talk about both sides. Yeah. And staff, by the way, has no agenda or position one yeah. way or another. Well, you know, I have some history with the board. And, and the way I'm looking at it, because we're only here because we want Trinidad to grow in the most beautiful way that we can display for our guests coming into our community. And I was on this board when we had a, a different marketing entity hired. Um, Hess Arts was hired for a while. 
And some of there, if you were to pick out those contracts, you would find that the advertising and marketing that they did, and we agreed to, but if you were to look at the labor portion that they charged us, it was probably around eighty to $100,000 every year. And this is actually a better deal for us with that history that I've gone through. Instead of paying an outside service, this actually brings the city of Trinidad and our passions and why we're all here. Um, this brings the, this brings us all much closer. And be, and I really can't say this enough. We've got to, got to, got to work as a team with all of our opinions. Right. And we all bring great opinions forward. My right. question is where they come up with $10,000? I love history. that the history, history, yeah. history of okay. the Welcome Center. Yeah. We had a private contractor clean that, and he was charging a thousand dollars. Was he was down there in every day? It was between eighty-five hundred and eleven thousand mm -hmm. in recent history. And the reason I know it was my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, well I'm on that one. <laughs> right. uh, so it was just so, they go up and clean so, everything. So I'm in agreement. Everything. I agree with what you're saying, Craig, the $10,000. I'm looking at it as a package that we use with Hess's because we really paid Hess's rent. We really paid Hess's utilities they, and spot because of how they build us. So I, I'm looking at it as we have to work together and after this year and getting state, state monies back, we'll be far ahead of the program that we were ahead of eight years ago or 12 years ago or 17 years ago. Just, the kind of thing of it is is Mrs. Hackett's doing that now. And mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, you know, it's it's just better that it's just part of this package that we took on the Bauckham Center. So it's not really, I guess the way I'd look at it, it's not really brick and mortar. If it's a person that's cleaning the bathrooms, that's displaying our Welcome Center to be better for our guests to come into our community. Because the Welcome Center itself, after I was there last week or two weeks ago, whenever we were there, it does need to be shined up a little mm -hmm. bit. It's not really very shiny, you know, we need to. That's a different thing, and I don't know how we're going to do that or what we're going to come back to city council over that we need, but it's not really shiny to. Well, for instance, you, you know, I understand your problem with janitor services, mm -hmm. but like, for instance, your business, that's an integral yeah. part of your yeah. business is the maintenance. Who wants to go eat in a restaurant that's dirty? Yeah. You go into the welcome center and you deny that, and that facility isn't cleaned properly. Somebody goes in there and it's filthy. They say, well, why do we want to go downtown when they're welcome centers? It, 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 it's it, all curb yeah. appeal. You're, you're, appeal. You're, mm -hmm. I agree with That's you. what I'm big on. I'm big on curb right. and, and, and I don't I mean shiny it up that way. And, well, no, 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 I, I, I didn't mean it that yeah. way. I, I, I believe in the curb appeal, and I think that yeah. um, we have to work towards yeah. it being yeah, I, I don't mean shiny it up. It's it's no, actually very clean shiny. inside. I mean the lawn is not edged. It looks bad. I mean <laughs> that drives me nuts. I mean the plants in there <laughs> look like plants that came out of an old West Western lobby. They need to be taken out or cleaned up and look nice. It just needs to be some reorganization that way. Even the brick that's on a couple of those sections is all busted up. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the reasons why we're here is to make those critiquing the mark. If it's ours, if it's, it's ours, I yeah. want it to look good. Yeah, I want to be proud. Well, maintenance repairs have to be mm -hmm. a city. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the city. Yeah. <laughs> so, so maybe the question that I have is if we put a list together, it wasn't very big, but it was really important mm -hmm. to us and went to the city and said, hey, listen, we would really like that grass to be toned up and we would like it edged the lawn. We would like some other repairs. That, that's a like conversation to see, for us to have with like the council. I would like to see a community board there. Let's walk, do a walkthrough when we're there next. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do a walkthrough and create a list of the things we'd like we'll to see. Who's the flowers down there? Uh, Karen Wolf. Okay, we'll have to talk to her on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so we'll put that on the agenda for our Welcome Center uh, work. Uh, so, Craig, do you understand that? Because I really think uh, you add some I questions. understand everything that's been said. I totally disagree. I apologize. But I think when I look at it, I look at that's money that could be spent to bring people to town. That's what the ordinance was written for. That's what the tax is for. If I'm losing 10 here and I'm losing another 34 50 and I'm losing that, then I'm up to about 20 grand that we could spend in a market to, to get people to come to Trinidad. They're already here when they get to the Welcome Center. 
you know, and the welcome center can't get in the last three blocks downtown. Well, that's so what we're going to work on. So to Mr. Stevens' point, I think we're asking you to adopt a budget in 2019 that looks like this will come in a more formal way. If we get the state support back, and that's 65000 we'll have access to half of that for next year. I think this conversation becomes more serious with council if we don't get the state funding back. Do we all agree that if well, we you know, if we big, know yeah. by if we know by oh, May yeah. of next year that we're not going to get the state funding back, then my proposal is we go to council and we begin to do a joint session to discuss this because then this becomes long term without that relief. I think do, do you not agree that if, if we get to that point that we know that 65,000 is not coming, that we, we collectively as two groups have to come together on this subject? We're all, we're all a victim of circumstances here. The city is, you as a tourism board are, somebody else made this decision for us and now we're out. We, we were in the system for 27 years. We've been out for a year and a half. I, I have really now. good confidence that we're going to get back. <laughs> I do too, but I, I think that, to Mr. Stevens' point, what, what you're being asked to take on and what it looks like you're going to be amenable to is kind of all on the agreement that we'll have the state funding. And so if we don't, we may need to have a different conversation. But when it's all said and done, I just wanted to you know my point of view is I'm really excited about it. if it's a year, two years, whatever time period, 10 years, that we're in there. I'm really excited that we get to go in there with our eyes and, and, and work together as a team and make the Welcome Center the wild thing that the citizens and everybody else needs to in the city of Trinidad so that we make our guests happy when they stop. It's, it's basically become the biggest focus of the whole tourism board is yeah. the Welcome Center. Mm -hmm. You and get correct information out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to move, if everyone's comfortable, we'll actually formalize those job descriptions and salary levels and or business items, but we did have one other policy item. Ms. Um, Michaels, would it be okay to move on? Sure. Okay, yeah. unless any, everybody was ready. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So district budget discussion. Um, so if we have 160000 based on what we just reviewed, that means we have 160000 and we want to get some general feedback from you on how we break that up. So we can take distribution off that responsibility because it's being rolled into what we're doing with the Welcome right. Center. So that will be handled through that. So that leaves, in my mind, local festivals and event funding and then marketing plan. I'm on the agenda. I'm on the agenda. Right under where it says budget discussion. The 160000 is what was at the bottom of that amended budget. So uh, Mr. Stevens, right at the, at the front agenda, right down under policy items, we had reorganization of the Welcome Center and budget discussion. So the budget discussion, we've handled distribution. So that 160000 that exists, we have uh, local festivals and event funding, and we have marketing plan. So I'm going to redistribute what Mr. Uh, Wallace gave us the other day. Thank you, Councilmember Perriego. As I walked away from our discussion without getting a copy of it, do you have yours? Yeah. Would you like a new one? No, that's fine. Okay. So, yeah, of course, you have yours. At any time of when they did the budget. Yes. Is there something that 160,000 bought? I don't think we've ever, we've never had a marketing that we, high. We've never had. So. I, I think 110 was the highest I ever saw it. That we spent. That the tourism board spent on a marketing contract and it's the year that Ms. Michaels referred to. How about. 80,000 80, of the 110 was salary. How about the whole, all of everything, the combination of what we gave to events and to is there a, is there a, a 40,000 40,000 is approximately what you gave to events average over the past two years but you only gave to really specific events mm -hmm. the last time we did an open grant funding it was 60,000 that was given and that was three years ago it was right before Jonathan so with us with your knowledge so with us taking on the welcome center and distributing these funds for marketing and, and local events. 
do you see that we're better or worse off than we were before? I think you're much better off in what you have available to you. It will be yeah, much more comfortable better. when the welcome so, center funding. So that there's a, a more comfortable feeling for me to know that. To know that. That we're in a, in a, in a, in a better spot taking on more. I, I believe in a financial spot, you're better. This last year, you had almost zero dollars to spend because they were all um, committed. We have zero committed outside of that. That 160 is the uncommitted funding. So what's committed is now the Welcome Center numbers that right. we just discussed, right. the trolley numbers based on history, and the billboard num numbers based on what we're committed to. Beyond that, we have no commitments for 2019. Okay. Next. Next um, meeting will bring you where we are left on this year, so you'll know what the rollover will be. Right. Okay, so Mr. Wallace's um, presentation included a marketing plan that had a really wide span. It was 82,000 to 216,000. We'd like to prepare the RFP if you want to go that direction, request for proposals from marketing companies for you to review, and we'd like to put that out in October. We kind of want you to give us an amount to set aside for that RFP in the budget. Well, now, are, are there going to be numerous RFPs? Or just there will be numerous RFPs and they'll likely come in just like this with a span of costs. So let's say you have five come in and one is the one you like is really high. Let's say you've budgeted 90000 for the marketing plan for next year to go toward the RFP. And the person who submits the proposal that you like best is 122000 As we go through the interviews with them, you begin to negotiate pieces of their proposal, and then you finalize a contract, and you either raise your budget amount, or they lower their proposal amount, and we go to a contract that we then take to city council for execution, and in that contract it will lay out what the specifics are, of what their responsibility will be, what Ms. Hackett's responsibility will be and what the tourism board's responsibility will be and how much you're going to pay them to implement their portion. So we don't we we can include all of these things in the RFP. If we set aside ninety thousand and I'm just I'm using that as an example, I'm not recommending that. And we put out the proposals and everything that comes back is well inflated of ninety thousand, then we'll have to sit down and decide whether we reissue an RFP or whether we choose someone from the list and we begin to negotiate a contract based on what you're comfortable spending. On the um, involves managing the social media pages, is there any way anybody, I know Marty's got a lot on her plate, or the assistant or anybody could manage the social media pages? And that may be something that you want to leave out of the RFP if that's right. something that you want done locally. Mr. Wallace felt really strongly that you need somebody professional and consistent managing that input. And he probably, that was his strongest point about everything on here, is that I think you get what you have, and when you look at where we are now, we're not strong in that area because we don't have a trained, a trained person on the tourism side that's, that's doing that. I, I can see the 82 as an RFP. And I don't know if we're going to divvy that up into, I mean, the RFP will not have the radio or the chronicle on it. wouldn't have the billboards on it. Um, it would have the website maintenance and the social media stuff. So I don't know how we take out, you know, so it wouldn't really be for 82. It would be for, you know, 70,000 or something. So we wouldn't say in the RFP, let me clarify that. We're going to ask for quotes. So what we would say is, here's what we want you to quote us, and they would give us, to do all of those things, here's what it would cost, and we'll ask for them to break that down mm -hmm. into a budget so that we can pick mm -hmm. what we're interested in doing off of that. But for budget purposes, because this RFP, if it goes out at the end of October, and it's out there through November, and we have the holidays, we're reasonably choosing and contracting in January. So we need to have a budget amount associated with how much you want to spend for this type of a marketing plan. Um, so the, uh, and these are additional billboards that Andrew was proposing. Yeah. These aren't committed already. Those are already in your budget. Yeah, so taking out the things that are already committed, which is the radio and the chronicle and 
the, the Radeon Chronicle are not committed. Those are in the 160 if you want to continue them. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. The 160, if you look back at the budget page I gave you, the billboards are the committed item. Those are current That's billboards. Yeah, I'm just looking at this middle page. The billboards on Andrew's page were additional because I believe Mr. Stevens oh, gotcha. had asked you had asked for additional billboard information. Okay. So, so, so I think um, in the line item that has the eighty-two thousand that needs to be whittled down because there's some other cost in here that are already on our other sheet of paper mm -hmm. is fine in my viewpoint for an RFP. One of my passions and it's really important to me, and it was well, something that was taken away really in the last year, is that. When this was done, when the ordinance was written and stuff, we, we researched Manitou Springs because they they do blend. Manitou Springs blends their tourism board and their welcome center together. They've done that about a year after the lodging tax. Um, but they really had said to me, along with Scottsdale, Arizona, which really has millions of dollars to spend on their tourism package um, research, um, they had both said to me, to me, a Manchester Springs in Scottsdale, Arizona, because we were trying to do some high-end input with people that had attorneys to research stuff. If you don't have money for your local community to do festivals, you're going to have a lot of, you're going to always have to have a certain amount of money available. And so we have not had anything in our grant line program for a while. We've, we have funded some things, but not like we would like to, so I would like to make sure that we have money for grants, for local grants, it's it's just so important. All the all the places that do a lot of things say you have to do that for your community, or you won't have community buy-in. And I do. And that's that. the biggest part of bringing people into the community yes. is to be able to have yep. that, that yeah, to have those funds available to them. Okay. You know. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Is there anything that the tourism board is considering? to start utilizing the entertainment district more? I, I would love that information and would love to be able to use that. And so we all, we'd like to need to know even research on, on the benefits of what entertainment district things can be done in it. But it's, I'm, I'm, I'm sold there, Karen. Yeah, we yeah. just need. I, I'm really thinking. I'm sold on the entertainment yeah, district. I am. I think yeah. well, our downtown merchants are sold on Yes, it. they are. Well, yes, supporting they are. the entertainment district through the development of new events might do for the tourism board is although you don't realize sales tax revenues, mm -hmm. city council does. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be in a continual conversation with city council about your support mm -hmm. in addition to your lodging tax dollars, then one of the things Ms. Hackett and I will be doing mm -hmm. in 2019 is we'll be analyzing sales tax based on the events that go on. So I think you will have a platform to say to city council, the tourism events that are going on are subsidizing the sales tax X dollars. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes your argument for more support from city council much stronger. It, so building the entertainment district is right. and, and, and just to, to that. And just to add to that, because I've not discussed this with anybody, even though I know you guys have a little blues affiliation there. In an event like the Blues Fest, at 5,000 people coming in town, with an average person spending only $100, that's a half a million dollars. I estimate everybody that came in town spent probably $200 a piece with rooms, food, entryway into the blues, which means a million and a half dollars, then the sales tax over that for just that weekend affected Trinidad. So that's the big thing. If we can, if we have other signature events mm -hmm. to come in, it, it, it just provide that impact. Yeah. I know I'm uh, for the Blues Fest because Tommy knows, and it's mm -hmm. in the packets there. Uh, the Blues Fest spent thirty-two thousand dollars on outside on advertising. They did. They did, and it's all you'll you'll be seeing it, and you, it's broke down everything that he spent a penny on is there that that is he promoted Trinidad like no other so if you'll allow me to make a suggestion about the 160 and think about three buckets one bucket is marketing mm -hmm. one bucket is support of existing local events and one bucket is development of a new mm -hmm. signature event okay. so I'll remind you that Articade came out of tourism board they did a year yes support for the organization they did two years of support for the implementation and then they stopped for a year or two now i understand rdk has come back in at different times for different mm -hmm. things like other existing ones but that that event grew out of tourism board 
So those are the staff suggestion would be that you maybe look at three buckets and what we need for budget is we don't need to break down that marketing dollar. It doesn't all have to go to the RFP. If you said, for example, 100,000 of your 160 or 90,000 of your 160 was gonna be used on marketing, then I wanna go back to a point Mr. Stevens made about the ordinance that says the money is to be spent on marketing. If your total budget is just under 300,000 and you say we're gonna spend 100,000 on marketing, then from a policy standpoint, you're saying you're dedicating 33% of that to marketing with a goal maybe of increasing that percentage every year as you garner support for other things. Now, if you put 100 toward marketing, that would leave you 60 for local events and for um, the development of a new event, if that was something you so desired, desired you wanted to do. Now, when we get into next year, you get your RFP. If you choose to only do an RFP for 60000 then you've still got 40000 of remaining marketing dollars. I'll remind you that what City Council is interested in, what the Finance Department is interested in is the bottom line. You have the ability throughout the entire year to rebalance those line items. If you decide in this time next year, you haven't spent all your marketing dollars and you want to loosen some of them up and do a grant round, that's great. These are just suggestions. I'd like to stop talking now and have you talk about specific amounts of what you want to spend on these things. Do I? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, my mental thought, we got by this past year without spending money yeah, on right. anything, okay? <laughs> the more we go toward, we finally have an opportunity to advertise this town, okay? There's, as much as we can spend to promote Trinidad, we should go down that road. I do also think that we have two uh, things that we should really support, and that's the Blues Fest and our okay. Okay, those are the two we need to really focus on. There's good, you know, you get phone calls and say, "Can you? Can, what do you think about this?" And you're like, "I don't know how to be polite." Right. And, and turn this person down right. because this doesn't make any sense at all. That's too much money for to get ten people in the right. town. So I think we need to focus on what we can do festival wise uh, with the Blues Fest and Art Arcade as much as we can. Without you know, right. we don't want to cut yeah. this in half. Right. If we were going to do another one, we either need to look at some sort of Oktoberfest or mm -hmm. some sort of Cinco de Mayo, something that brings, you know, we have the summer fairly well covered, but something that either takes us into October or brings us back into May so we can start, we talked about this before, starting to work it so we would eventually have something going on, at least one thing every month throughout the year. But we can't just start and do something in January because we're not prepared to do something in January. So, and we can't obviously do an Oktoberfest. But that's where we There's need to- more problems here, but it's yeah, it's Mount Carlos. So that's, I, I, I want as much money as we possibly can so we can market the town. <clears throat> and, and as a side note, I, just to bring you up to date, I think you know this, but to bring you up to date background, so um, we did help Blues Fest quite a bit for many years with money to keep going. I see them a little differently right now than I'm going to say Art Arcade, although Art Arcade is, you know, just an incredible event too, is that I think the Blues Fest is on such a tilt that with extra support right now, we could be almost like Earth known versus just U.S. known because it is, it's right at the turning point where it could be like everybody in the world wants to come to our fest because of how, how they're moving it forward. And so that you know, so we did help fund Art okay to get that signature event open for the first three years. The, the one thing about the blues is it's the inner, the people you bring how popular they are throughout the United States. And that's what's driving people from Louisiana, from all over the different states. I talked to so many people that are from Louisiana, Texas, that they were, this was on their list to come here. It's the Just only because time. of that. So I think that, and I and I agree with, with Craig and, and Cy and Camille that we do need to start another event that to help it kick kick up. I totally agree with that. You know, and, and I think the fall is the best time 
So, so thanks, Tara. That was a good way to put it into three buckets. Yeah. So, what do we currently have that we want to do? What's new that we want to develop? And then and marketing. And marketing. Can I step now for a second? Since you're co-chair. Does, does anybody want to put forward some numbers? And you know, we've had a pretty good risk discussion. So, one other thing: if we get the additional sixty-five. That changes things a lot. That yeah, it seems a lot for next year, yes. So that's a lot of this hinges on the fact that we've got this sixty-five thousand dollars floating around out there, which right. could either go back in towards marketing or back in towards festival. We would have thirty-two fifty additional for next year if we get the sixty-five because it would cover half a year. Half a year. Right. Okay. So on the one sixty, which is where we are today. Can somebody throw out a number proposal? Do you want to wait for Ms. Michaels yeah, to come back okay. to have that discussion? Yeah. The third tourism ready asset that the staff generally agrees, we have Trinidadio, we have Articade, we also have SCRT. So um, whether you agree or not, when we look at, at what at the state, what's being marketed, if we look at what is considered from the outside tourism ready events, those are the three I hear about. Can you throw anything else on the table? that you think is tourism ready from an event standpoint is what I'm talking about. I'd say the entertainment district. Yeah. And that that That's certainly goes, I love the entertainment district. I know. And that certainly goes to the Trinidadian on Articade who used where that. Does, where does Santa Fe Trail Santa Fe Trail is generally where, where, thought of as a local festival right now. It's basically local. When you look at who attends yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, so it's is there or anything that would it ever come back to the entertainment district? If you brought it downtown, there was there was the it argument. Was there at one time. There was, was the argument about the fact is that they make their money by the alcohol mm -hmm. sales. That's how they make their money. If you bring it down into the entertainment district, now I make the money and they don't make the money. Correct. Yeah. Right. And so. You don't well, want to. Well, what but if, my what argument if it was on that up, is what if it I was, don't belong to the Chamber of Commerce, and maybe if you, they charge booth rent rather than get the alcohol, I, I they would make no. their money from the booth rent and from me joining the Chamber again. You have to change their mind. They have to that. change their mind. Well, so that's what, their what mindset. we're discussing is okay. if, what is tourism ready assets. Yeah. And I said, I, 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 I defined them as trip. three. And I said SCRT, Articade, and Trinidadio. And Mr. Kress brought up, was Santa Fe Trail considered tourism ready? Now, is the rodeo considered tourism mm -hmm. ready? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay, so there's yep. a fourth one. I okay. think, I Music think and the, lyrics, that was great that for was our hotel this time. I mean, okay. there were only 150 people or something that came in, but they all came in and Music stayed in hotels. And, um, uh, there, there's really so many small ones. I, I don't know how to True. decipher that. You know, and I think, I think the support of all those small ones is, is a good thing because it brings in that certain mm -hmm. and then that's what you build on fourth of july do, tourism ready yeah and that and that could be a good thing because if the motels have people in it there's places for them to go that's an event for you them you need the motels full for it to be considered tourism ready well, or something that? that the state can market something that the state can market mm -hmm. to bring so, in there's so many really i i really hate to Okay. I would, I would like to do the bucket thing though. This much mm -hmm. for new ones, this mm -hmm. much oh. for ones that are tourism ready, and this much for marketing in general or something. Right. So she asked for a figure how much we want to set aside for all of this. I'd like general. you to start throwing out some numbers to break the 160 down. I say 85. I, yeah, I was going to say 70. I'm cheaper. <laughs> But uh, so for what? what? For the inner for, for the all three buckets? For the. I buckets. say 85. For this part, for the market. For the market. Can okay, we have an 85? Uh -huh. Anybody? 85 sounds right. 85 sounds we're, right. There'll things. There'll be things that will go down and right. things that will go up. Right. Up. Right. But we, this is the first year um, that we actually. So Karen, just I don't know if you know this, but because we spent all the money in reserves, we, and and because we did some ads. Um, with Jonathan, sixty thousand dollars plus the thing. We didn't have any money to spend this year, so we've sort of like, you know, people have been like, at, like yelling at us, but we're like, we got the trouble. Yeah, we have we not got the But we people have yelled at us, but we have not seen any grant request either come through. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, then they'll give up on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then they'll give up. Yeah. It's it's really it's, it's not that people didn't inquire just to make it to you. Uh -huh. There's, there's uh, been no money. But so. e even where even where the entertainment district is concerned, and the chamber of commerce. I'm sorry, I just have to say this again. We are a team. The way that this city's going to grow is for us to bond again with them right. and let them know they can't do that liquor. But food is a problem. But they then, could be making then, burritos and sell a thousand burritos. But then so we have to educate here's, them. Here's the thing with this, with the chamber of commerce, is maybe we can give them some money to do some of the things that are costing them. Okay, so back to the numbers, because I, I want to, I don't want to, we, we're on a timeline now. All right, yeah. So I want to talk about that 75 and if, or 85, and if everybody agrees that that's correct. Mr. Stevens, I saw you maybe think you wanted it higher. Yeah. Did I read your mind wrong? Yeah. Okay. At least 100. Okay. Now, remember, you were gone when we said if we get the state money, there's another 32. Oh, no, no, but right. he, you're That's asking for the 85 for the R market. For the, for for the, the market. market. For the yeah, I think it should be higher. We finally have an opportunity. I don't. Because, I, I, I think because that can give us extra money to start a new project. Well, let's quickly look over this. We have 85, and that leaves 75 for both existing events and development of an yeah, event. I think this is a lot of money for advertising. I, I think that, and, and, and Andrew put a lot of good prospects for us. It's excellent prospects. And I think that 85, we're at 82, I think 85 is... 85, and then we got 70, what, 75,000 for our local... So setting, setting it aside, if 40 is typically what you've done for setting aside for local, do you think 40 is high? Is it enough? Is it low? Are you talking about local grants? Local or? support of funding and festivals. I uh, say 50. Um, so if we were to get, since this is a whole media buy plan that has to be it has to be cleaned up the way we want it, but it could be in an RFP, and the low side to it is 82 for everything, blockbuster, everything. Why don't we do 85? Okay. And why don't we do 75 for... I'd like to break it between local right. events and development of a new... And I, new see, I see 50 for... Oh, okay. So and then 20, 20 for some, starting something new. So there's what you're saying is that if we use 85, we have 75 left over, and the 75 you want us to break down. To I've got it at 50 and 25 right now. Okay. But um, that's one proposal. And we will have another 32 if we get the state funding, which we're working really hard on. I just think 25 is a lot for if somebody comes in and says they want to start something new. Oh well, 20. I say 20. Well, 20. Yes. I, so can because, we go to 90 then? Because on the, if we can work with the chamber to come up with something to, we want to build this district downtown. We yeah, want to build I actually it. attended a presentation yesterday from those that do the Colorado Classic, both in Vail and in Colorado mm -hmm. Springs, mm -hmm. which is the huge bicycle race, oh, about yeah. potentially doing something down here. And I heard that spiel too, and it's a fabulous spiel. Well, no, we're not asking here. you to support that today. We're just asking if you want it's to set a, aside a, the twenty thousand for new development, and then we can bring forward whether that's one person to do a huge bike race, whether that's a couple of different events you want to try and and negotiate. Um, we can have that discussion after. I've just kind of wondered if you're comfortable. And we could move that money back and forth. So you're going twenty fifty ninety is what you're doing. Twenty fifty ninety. For trying to move closer to that hundred for Craig. Yeah, that's and that's I, I appreciate that. So we're talking about twenty for something new, fifty for what's going on and trying to figure that out, and then and then ninety for um, the media buy plan. Craig, do you want to give us a different breakdown so we can talk about it? Breakdown. No, I would like for you to use it. I, I would I would skip a new one for this year. Okay. Okay. And I would I would be okay to do the fifty for for existing stuff, and then we would spend a hundred and ten on marketing. Be Eighty five is just a drop in a bucket. Okay, we really the more we can, people want to. They we need to make this place. We've been talking about making a, a, a place for people to come and stop. 
But if they have nothing to come to to enjoy, if we don't bring in that new, this new air theme, we need more entertainment down here. So what would you say is a compromise is if we did the 90, 50, 20, the caveat is we only spend the 20 if we can get something really sexy worthwhile. to develop worthwhile, and yeah. if not, that rolls into the marketing. And then if we can grab the 32 and spend that yeah. all on marketing. marketing. Yeah. I'll do that. Because if we don't have another event, even like the entertainment district, you, you're, you're going to market uh -huh. well, but we got a mark to create to come you, in for you these activities. You created this district to do something in it, so if you don't give no money to help them do yeah, that, you're absolutely we're not right. getting nowhere. And, and we're, we right. are on a verge of becoming a so. really huge bike and walking trails here. It's it's huge. I these mean, guys, just, you have to have some money set aside to, to be able to entertain to start something. What we'll do if we set it up the way we're talking about is we'll start bringing forward proposals from professionals. We're not talking about local people who, and not that local people aren't professionals, let me reiterate that. Mm -hmm. For the new festival, we'll start bringing forward proven professionals who've developed events within the state of Colorado that have numbers as to what they think they can accomplish yeah. by developing it. If you don't see anything that you want to invest in in that realm, then we would, you know, sometime into next year, we'll know in May about that funding. If we get the, the, the 65000 back, you may be comfortable going with the new event. If we don't, you may immediately want to roll that 20 into marketing. Okay, so, so 90, 20, 50. 90, right. 20, okay, 50. Okay, I can live with that if we're mentally prepared yeah. to spend okay. that 30. And, and we have I'm to remember marking. that if I'm we marking. make this town busy, if this is the place of choice, make this town busy. Yes. if this is the place of choice, then the, then more rooms will be sold and more, more tax will be collected. Our goal is half a million dollars in right. revenue. We need that tax revenue. Yeah. We, we We're at, and we have to get these people in there. The only way we're going to do is give them events that they can see overnight for. That's how we make money. It's like, mm -hmm. okay. So we're going to go with uh, 90000 uh, for marketing. 20,000 for potential development of a new signature event and or events and local events and festival funding of 50 and when we adopt this budget in October and then we'll forward it to council and then we'll talk about kind of what our expectations are for each bucket like for local events I think we ought to do an actual grant round mm -hmm. rather than just allowing people who care about it to come in and apply. Can, so, can we do like quarterly grant rounds or six months? You can break that 50 up however you want. We can do, I, I would suggest a couple of times a year maybe. Okay. okay. So um, that's the discussion in terms of budget. Now if we could just go to the business items, I want to get a couple of votes on the on these okay. items. I, I want to hear one thing. From Camilla about Studio Six. Well, do we oh, do that's that right now. Sure. Yeah. Um, it, well, actually, can we just take the quick votes and then we'll okay. go to other items? Okay. So we have one um, motion to approve the assistant manager, assistant welcome center manager job description at fourteen fifty uh, uh, an hour for a total of thirty thousand one hundred and sixty a year not to exceed a maximum benefited package of 56,130. Can we have that motion? Just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll second. Do we have a motion and a second? And this oh. approval second. of the assistant manager job yeah. description yeah. and salary. All in favor? Aye, aye, aye. Any All opposed? Right. And this is how important and passionate we are going to be to make sure that assistant manager and the manager does such a great job that we Why? show the state of Colorado we get funding back and then we get our 65 back. Or, or the other thing that Craig has something coming back out of there that they sent somebody to eat at his restaurant. Yeah. That's okay. my thing. So hearing no right? opposition, is okay. that approved? Yeah. Yep. Okay, then if we can have a motion to approve the new Tourism and Welcome Center Manager job description at an hourly rate of $22.22 for an annual salary of $46,217.60, not to exceed a benefited package of $67,147. Is there a motion? 
Do I motion again? I motion again. I have the motion. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, hearing no opposed then, is that approved? No, I approve. I know okay. I approved. Approved. We had two abstentions on that, Raven. Please note for the record. But we have approval. Okay, three approvals, one extension. Okay, now other items. Thank you. I got a call the other day from Andrea at Studio Six. Okay. And she said she had been trying to get a hold of Marilyn Lucer, who has never returned her phone call, because she had some questions about new galleries here in Canada. Okay. I asked her why Marilyn Lucer never got that answer back yet. Why not one of us? Okay. And I guess we're kind of confused a little bit. We're what contract do we have? What kind of contract do we have with this? I'll find out. Yeah. Oh, I'm aware of we that call. We this contract. I, did, I don't deal with Andrea. I deal with Tracy. Well, so, they're both one of the same. Okay. They're both one of the same. Okay. Andrea happened to call me, but Tracy is, um, is. I told her I would get back with her. I will take the place of uh, Marilyn Lucer. Um, <laughs> This is um, really strange. The whole conversation. This whole conversation is very disappointing. I'm in the process. I was starting to write a letter to him. I would like to write a letter to him. Okay. This is the content of the letter. Okay. Um, but in the process of getting pictures, so they could put some pictures up. Does anybody have me one of these? Hi, Andrea. It was nice talking to you the other day. I'm sorry that Marilyn didn't return your call, but I will help you however I am able. I was also wondering who you contacted instead of the tourism board for information. I understand that you had a conversation with one of our board members, Tom Press, who can also help you with any of this. When Jonathan left us, we had to reinvent a lot of procedures. It would have been greatly appreciated if Studio 6 had come to one of our board meetings and talked about this with all of us. And then Camilla goes on to list all of the galleries and the professional photographers and um, provided her number. So, okay. All right. Is anyone opposed to Camilla sending this as a tourism board member? I think she should be meaner. Well, okay. trust me, Greg. I want uh, Craig. I wanted to be meaner, and I just didn't want to. Uh, I did want to be meaner. I, I was so angry at this point, but over the days, I kind of calmed down, and and I just, I, I still want to add one more sentence in here. Okay. And I did. I think uh, tell him to be. Um, I'm completely uh, unimpressed with their performance. And then That's so far, I am we don't too. even know what's going on. We yeah. don't even know what's going on. We have no idea. Yeah. This we, is just yeah. part of the and, thing that we have so many and, things undone. And I don't even know if we have a current contract and they're trying to walk us into something. Yeah. We're getting we information. Do. And it's then we supposed have to be up in September. It is September 30th. Yeah. So are yeah. they at the bottom line trying to get something done for us? Uh, I'll find out. That's yeah. what we I'll need to know. If they don't have anything done, I was unaware that this, they, these calls had happened. They haven't done anything all year, and now they're trying to They're work. scrambling to get yep. something that's, done. That's and I sent another for? email. I thought those were active this week, or the week of the 24th. And it's so that would be weird because week. they hit all I talked our, to them again tomorrow. I, I want you to know I did send an email yesterday to them because I wanted to keep active with them. And I, I told them basically, gathering up pictures, please give me a little bit more time. So I wanted more time to talk to you guys. Okay. I didn't know the contract was up in September. Okay. Uh, you know, so we, I, I just was a wash where Maryland came into this whole picture. Well, the whole weird thing about it is in the very beginning when we did, when we were dealing with them with, with uh, contracts, not only did we meet them via phone, and I think they came to one of our they meetings. They came to several too. meetings. They hit, at, as I saw in the tourism and, and wherever it was at. So, uh, so we already had connections with them. They had our email addresses. Why they kind of went around all of us. I, I can't they, answer. Andrew yeah, was so managing the contract, so. Yeah. I, I know that sounds like an excuse. It is yeah. an excuse. I, I'll start back yeah. this week. Uh, I think they can. We can let them do no. an RFP just along with the rest of the people. Mm -hmm. you know, we, have we, can, we, can we have to find out. We have to find out. We have two things we have to do. We have to get the trolley wrapped and we have to get the right. website live. If we're in the middle of something, we've got the trolley. We should walk. wrap the, we the trolley. You, we have to complete. What we I want to know where the rest is. No, we don't have to sign another contract. No, no right on. Right. And I guess. And, and I'm a little concerned that if this is the month that their contract is over with and they're, and they're working now, it's so that they, to get the stuff done, 
they need to have a contract money to extend it. So I really don't even want to go into it. We just need to find out if, what, what the scenario is. Why well, is this and I don't know whether to send this letter out now or to see if we can wait for a contract of what they're well, doing. We have to find out what but on my last letter, I want to change and say, what are you in the process of doing? What are you doing we for us right now? We have no idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So far, and it's been nothing. It seems like that. Tom, you suggest the. It's got to be wrapped. And what's the other thing? Yeah, the slip website's got to be live. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, those are the two. And and so, the, yeah. My my biggest concern, Tara, is if this contract is enforced that we did pay for it, that it's their final month for the website. That they're only. I have approved no invoices, so okay. I'll find. So I know but that. But this, know. what they're asking me for this is for the website. We don't even know. Well, I, I, well have, no, she did tell me the website. website. She okay. did tell me the website. Because yeah. they did have the stuff for the first four pages. They mm -hmm. had all that. Yeah. And now yeah. I'm, I, they want, they, she called me with the specific thing of music. Oh. So that's why I got the picture from the music. Mm -hmm. I got a picture from Dwight. I actually told them, do not mention, you know, there's the pictures of the music. So she did specifically, they did ask for me to put the music. And then I told them about the new river rafting, which they had no idea. And that's when I said, gee, you need to talk to, you know, that's when I said, gee, I wish we would have had a better communication. This was I did on the telephone. From then on, I start okay. doing everything email. Thanks I'd like to, to do that. Let's okay. Yeah, yeah thank you. Let me run over where we are at the end of this meeting and where we're set for our agenda for October the 3rd. Can I do one more thing? This has sure. nothing to do with Studio 6. We're off okay. of that. Uh, Mooses is going to do a meet the candidate again for the whatever, <laughs> meet the candidate. Their specific questions are going to be for outdoor hiking and biking, and that's what they want to ask the candidates about. I don't know what they really intended this. They wanted to know if they could use the tourism board as backing like a sponsor. So they know, because they're trying to get some people from Denver, from the hiking and the trails up in the state of Colorado to come down to meet the candidates. Uh, for this you know, election, and they wanted to know if we would they could put their our tourism board as a like a co-sponsor. I don't know what that even means, but they don't want no money from us. They just want us to represent and say that the tourism board is backing this for the hiking and trails and and yeah. get this out there yeah. to ask the candidates a few questions. That's yeah. up to you. That's what they told me. Yeah, that's not in. a bad idea. And so the background information for the So October 4th, they're going to do meet the candidates at Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Whoever shows up, show up. But they are bringing a couple people down from Denver uh, to be able to talk to about yeah, the hiking trail. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Here's what I'm going to go over the agenda for October the third. It'll be a work session. It'll be here in the city council. I will book that room for our work session. Based on our discussion today, I have a complete. Um, Mr. Press requested that we go over the complete financials for this year. Everything that's hit the line item where the line items stand, and where what's remaining. So we'll do a good, complete financial discussion and allow about 20 or 30 minutes for that. The next will be a quick update on where we are on the job description posting for the assistant city manager, uh, assistant welcome center manager. And I want to talk about how we're going to hire them and who will help participate in choosing them, if anyone, from the tourism board. So I want to discuss that procedure. Then, in addition to that, um, the RFP will be the next thing that we'll talk about. Early uh, definition on from this on what's going into the RFP. Some early text for you to look at. Um, that will be approved then at the last second meeting in October. So we'll get a chance to get your feedback on that. And then it sounds like we need to spend a good 30 or 45 minutes on Studio Six and where those projects stand what they've been paid for, and how the conversations go. So I have Studio 6, the RFP, the Welcome Center, job update, and the financials. Now we did receive a request, and I see Connie Martinez is here from um, to give us an update on Trinidadio and how their marketing uh, uh, went on Trinidadio. Do you want me to add that to that agenda, and how much time do you want to allow for that? 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Um, yeah, probably about 20. Um, what I did want to ask um, Tara about was she had asked for a meeting prior to that yeah. so that we could hash, I guess. That's what, where I want to get an idea of how much time you want to allow for that, and then I'll meet with Connie. In fact, I'll talk with her as soon as we're done. 
Um, it's just one of the things you want Okay. Because we have some pretty uh, yeah, big things on the agenda. Yeah. You guys have told me you have a hard stop at 11. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want to meet at 830? Because we've got so much to discuss. I can do that. 830 is fine. Okay, 830. That'll, that'll leave. On the 3rd? On, on uh, the 3rd of October in, in that room for a work session with these items. I have to ask one more question about studio Sure, space. and then previewing the next meeting after that, which will be October the 17th. So, um, I will not be available on that day. The EDC, the Economic Development, uh, commissions in town. Ms. Hackett will be running your meeting. It'll be at the Welcome Center and it'll be a much shorter meeting okay. because what you're going to do is approve your final budget. Mm -hmm. Anything that comes out of our financial decision, you'll financial discussion, you'll have that as well as approving um, the final RFP. If there's anything that needs to be action with Studio 6, it'll be approved at that meeting. So we'll use that meeting for approvals. It'll be at the Welcome Center and Ms. Hackett will run that meeting. So um, that's our next month. Send this letter and some pictures to them. Is it okay yes. for Ms. Yes. Campbell to send the letter? That's fine. We need that information. Uh, okay. Does anybody have anything else that they see to Mr. Cress's point that's been ongoing that we need to get done on the agenda in October, either at the work session on the 3rd are the regular meeting on the 17th. So um, Studio 6 is going to sit at that meeting, is that correct? I don't know. Are you requesting, requesting that they ask? I kind of would like to have an unbridled discussion yeah. on the 3rd. If you feel it's important to have them as part of that unbridled discussion, no, we can really do that. But I, I, I haven't even visited with them yet. Yeah, so I think I don't we want need to do that. Visit, I think they'll. you visit with them, yeah. bring okay. them up to date with our concerns, mm -hmm. and then we go from And then if we need to take them. action, then we'll take yeah. that action on the right. 17th. Right. Now, I think Jerry will wait, but we got the Blues Fest brought our proposals in. Should we wait until another time, or do we send that in now? I think if you want to hand that over to me, is that additional yes. work for the third? This would probably be yeah, probably. until November. Okay. Well, to the third or is this whatever. a request for funding? Yes. Yeah. If it's for next year, I don't think we can even look at that until we have budget adopted and... So and I here's I'm gonna I'm gonna state this knowing that two of you are intricately yeah. involved with Trinidadio. I really have a strong opinion that we should do a grant round, mm -hmm. or right. or and allow everyone to apply, or we should designate those events that we think are tourism ready, and we should invite just those to apply. And I'm okay either way, but I think what happens is. And, and we hear it on the staff side is because some of you are associated with Trinidadio because we have a council member that sits that's involved with Trinidadio that they get Trinidad. additional Trinidad. Uh, well you have Mr. Goodall oh that's right I forgot you have that. additional <laughs> you, you I have Karen, Karen. that you have an addition and I think yeah. it from a perception standpoint I your agree. point is very valid you're right so I was like very valid so yeah. maybe January. So I think we well, need to finish having the discussions. It doesn't matter. You could do it in December or, or November, but we need to have the discussion. Okay. We need to have those grant rounds early. Thanks. So people can plan. Yeah. So maybe okay. the first six months. Like, maybe we issue it in November. Yeah. I think we so. can cut so the we, checks in January. So we can see them in December. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we've got that. Okay, so I'll take this for now. Yes, thanks, Tara. No, yeah, thank thanks. thanks for keeping us on. And we'll set this aside for an application grant round. Okay, I think, Ms. Chair, Madam Chair, I'm done. Uh, Ms. Hackett, did you have anything else? No, ma'am. Okay. I want to thank everybody on the board. I mean, you guys are awesome. What a, what a beautiful board. A lot of passion here. Thanks, Tara, for what you do. Thanks, Marty. Thanks, everybody, for all that we're doing to try to make Trinidad even a greater city than it already is. I think we're getting somewhere. Okay. Let's get there. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks. 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 Thanks.